So we've already done derivatives of inverse trig functions, and now we're going to go the other way, integration resulting in an inverse trig function. Uh, well, let's just use our formula sheet here, handy thing to know, and let's get started on some worked examples. So the first one's just a warm up because it's exactly like this one here. Now it's going to be inverse sine over, and now it's the x that goes first, not x squared, but just x. And then the mistake people make here is they put the 9 here, but it's not the 9, it's the square root of whatever that thing is there. And of course there's a plus c on the end. Um, obviously square root of 9 is 3, so I really should tidy it up a little bit. And that is our answer. So our second example is where we have to start thinking a little bit, because it is not of the same form as this one here. And the wrinkle is this 4 here. The 4 causes us some problems. So what are we going to do? Well, we can factorize this to get rid of that 4. That's the goal. So if I bring that 4 out, I get this really ugly thing here now. I get 9 over 4, right? 4 times 9 over 4 would be 9. And then minus... And now that's gotten rid of that 4 there, so now I've just got an x squared there. Uh, now we're still, we still haven't started integrating yet, so the integral of whatever that thing is there. Now you should remember your thirds, and you should be able to say, well, square root of this times this, well, I can bring that 4 out as a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And now we're pretty close to having it of the same form as one of these. But this 2 out the front of the root is a problem. But luckily, this is the same as 1 half times 1 over that. So we can bring 1 half out here. And now finally, we have what we need. We have an integral that's in the same form as this sine 1 over here. So we can say that that's equal to 1 half times. Now it's going to be inverse sine. We have a nice little x squared all by itself. So that's going to be x on the top. And then it's the root of 9 over 4 on the bottom. And then a little plus c there. Root 9 over 4. All right, so what about this root 9 over 4? Well, the square root of 9 over 4 is 3 over 2. So that's x divided by 3 over 2, which we can write now as equals 1 half inverse sine over x over 3 over 2 will be the same as 2x over 3, and then a little plus c on the end. All right, so this third one here, it's a tan one. You can see there's no square root there, so it's like the tan one there. And you need to be really careful because we don't want a 1 up the top. We want an a up the top. So this needs to be the square root of whatever that is. But we've also got this problem here with this 4 because we will need to get rid of that 4 as well. So let's get rid of that 4 by factorizing, by dividing both by 4 there. So that helps considerably because now we can take that quarter out of our uh, integral. So that's got rid of one problem. It's got rid of that 4, so now we have a clean x squared. But we have an a squared value of 9 on 4, but we have this value up the top just being 1. That value needs to be the square root of that value. Now, if I do that, if I just straight up just change it magically like that, well... I've just straight up changed the value of the integral. It's broken. It's, it's no good. It's broken. So how can I fix it? Well, I want that to be 3 on 2, right? Because that's 9 on 4. I need this to be the square root of it. Now, it wasn't 3 over 2. It was 1. Now, I can make it 1 by doing a, a this thing. 2 thirds times 3 over 2 is 1. And what I can then do is take that 2 thirds and bring it outside of the integral. And now I have something that is in that form. I've got an a squared, I've got an a, I've got an x squared with no little 4 out the front of it. I can just go for it. So 1 quarter times 2 thirds is uh, 2 over 12, which is 1 sixth. And then I have an arc 10 or an inverse 10. And then I need an x, not an x squared, but an x on the top. And I need an a value on the bottom. I need 3 over 2 on the bottom. Now, if I'm going to put 3 on, over 2 on the bottom, I may as well put 2 over 3 as my final answer, and a little plus c on the end. That's about all I want to cover with this one. Uh, you can see that the inverse tan one can get a little bit tricky because you need to match up your top and your bottom there by doing some sort of fancy manipulations here and bringing things outside of the integral. Have a try.